Hi, we are Group Six from Tutorial Group A50. I'm Ting Yang. I'm Jin Yi. I'm Fan Yi, and I'm Ling Xi. Today, we are happy to present to you our final year for the management system. When the system is first open, it auto automatically imports CSV file from the free sources folder into its database. CSV format supports escape characters, allowing special characters and usernames to be entered correctly. The CSV file only needs to provide usernames and emails, and the program will automatically spit out each user IDs and their emails. The first key feature of, about our system is the user login page. In the case the user forgets their user ID, we have implemented a user-friendly feature that allows them to retrieve their user ID using, using their name. So I enter my name, and I can straight away get my name. This feature saves the user time and eliminates the frustration of not being able to remember their user ID. During the login phase, the user can choose their domain and input their user ID and default password to login. Here, we use the student login as an example to illustrate, and I will demonstrate when the case the student entered the wrong password. So I enter my ID, and I enter the wrong password. Yeah, so I have to retry again. Now I will currently log into my student account. Yeah, so this is the student main page upon successful login. Additionally, once the user logs in, they can change their password. So if I set the password as new, and I enter twice, the system will return a warning. This is because the password is too short. Or if you enter a new password as new password, and the second time I enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, the system will return a warning also. This is because the two passwords is different. This feature ensures that the user's account is secure and that their password meets the necessary requirement. Successfully reset my new password. Yeah, the password changed successfully. So I will log out. Moreover, the user passwords are encrypted using the SHA-3 algorithm for enhanced security. When a user change their password, the system uses the algorithm to securely hash the password. So this will be another important feature to our system. After changing the password, we attempted to log in again. So I enter the old password first. Yeah, the system prompted an error because I just reset my password. So now I'll enter the new password. Yeah, and then I have successfully access the system. After logging in, students can view their personal information and enter three to see all projects available for registration. Students can choose a project and attempt to register. I am interested in Prof Professor Wall An's project, designing negotiation agents to participate in international computation. So I enter P7, and select agree to successfully submit my request. At this point, my project and supervisor are still blank because the FYP coordinator has not approved it yet. Now we will split the screen to operate on both sides simultaneously as we implemented the database synchronization. Logging in with the coordinator's account We can see that a red new appears in the accept or reject, reject request column, indicating that there is a new request waiting to be processed. We enter six and see that there is a student's request ready to be processed. We select the request and then approve it. We can see that the request has been approved. Going back to the home page, we see that the new has disappeared indicating that we have cleared all the requests. Next, we switch to the student page. This time, we can see that we have successfully registered for the project. Our supervisor has also been updated. We cannot see the pro available project anymore. Halfway through the project, I suddenly become bored and want to change the title. So I choose change title for project. Click confirm, enter the new title, student new. Press Y to confirm. And successfully send my request. In the current state, we still see the old title because 
the supervisor has not approved our request yet. Let's log in to the supervisor interface. And we see that there is a new request waiting to be processed. We enter and approve the request. Going back to the student interface, we can see that the project title has been modified, student new. In addition, the supervisor has the ability to modify the name of their own supervised project. To do so, we go to five, modify title of project, and we select P7 to modify the title. Uh, we enter uh, supervisor new as a new title, confirm the change with yes, the new project title is updated successfully. Now let's use proof dotting as an example. Let him create a new project. He can select option three, which will promote the system to request the project's title. The project is created when the supervisor has confirmed the creation. Once confirmed, the system will automatically assign a project ID 17, following the last project on the project list. The new project status will be available by default. Moving on to the next scenario, we will demonstrate a situation where a supervisor transforms his student. Firstly, student two will log in and attempt to register for the new project, which is project 17. The request is then submitted to the coordinator. Then we log in to coordinator. The coordinator will be notified of the request and a new label will be appear next to option six. The coordinator can enter the request ID and select option one to approve the request. Now, the project is successfully allocated. Yeah, it's allocated. Next, suppose Prof. Zhao Jun is too busy and wishes to transfer Project 17 to Prof. An. In that case, he can select Option 8 and enter the project ID and Prof. An's ID. The transfer request is then sent to the coordinator. To approve it, we need to log into coordinator. So, so coordinator slash option six, enter the request ID and approving the request. As a result, project 17 will be allocated to student two and supervised by Prof. N. Now, we will introduce a new student, student three. He wished to register for Prof. N's project, but they are currently unavailable as Prof. N has already successfully allocated two projects. Going to student three's account, he cannot see or register for Prof. N's project as the project will not be displayed when the student trying to register for a project. In this case, we need to log in to student two. And the register for his project by selecting option seven. Coordinator go to six to accept the the registration re request. Now student three can register for Prof. N's project. We log in to student three. And register. And send request to coordinator. Approve it. Uh, 
However, students who can no longer be, be able to register for any project, we log in to student two. And try to register. Yeah, he can no longer register for any project. I'll then demonstrate an earlier case whereby a supervisor trying to transfer his project to another supervisor who is already supervising two projects. We introduce a new student form. We log in his account. Oh, sorry, my user ID entered wrongly. Now I log in into the page. Then I register Professor Gao's project. We log in into coordinator and accept the request. Now Professor Gao tries to transfer his project to Professor An. We log in into Professor Gao's page. Then we press eight. The request is sent. Then we log in into coordinators page. We press six. However, the coordinator cannot approve his request. His request will be registered or remain pending until the number of Professor An's projects decrease. By doing so, the number of supervising projects of a supervisor is controlled. So now the coordinator will reject the transfer request. Oops, sorry, I entered the wrong request ID. Let me try again. Yeah, so now the request has been rejected. Finally, we log out the system and see the goodbye logo. Then I'll show the generate project details function. Coordinator can also generate project detail by different filters, such as project status, by student the supervisor, and by student. Now I illustrate the function by project ID. Oops, I entered the wrong project ID. Now I try a correct one. Then by supervisor ID. Then by super uh, by student ID. Finally, by the project status. 